What's going on everybody? Welcome to another tutorial for Cinema 4D and X-Particles. My name is uh, Rick Spates from Studio Spates. I run a one-man creative agency and make all kinds of visual and audible content for businesses, brands, entrepreneurs, artists, uh, whatever. Um, so yeah, I today I'm going to Today I'm going to teach you how to fill up certain letters or words with smoke with the help of uh, X particles in Cinema 4D. It's a very cool way to maybe make a, a video header for a website. You could, uh, for example, fill up the, the letters of your logo or another company, uh, another company's logo or name with the smoke. It's very stylish and is probably gonna look really great on your website or your client's website. But feel, of course, feel free to uh, use this in any way you see possible. Maybe you don't even want to fill letters up with smoke. You you can always do uh, it with different shapes. But for this tutorial, I am picking the word "cool" because it's very cool. Okay, so bad jokes aside, let's get into it. Um, in order to make this work, you're going to need key objects. It's very important that you imprint these objects into your head. It's gonna save you a lot of headache in the future. Um, so yeah, may, may make sure you remember these so you can quickly make new systems, or of course, feel free to save these into a template, which you can easily and quickly load into a new project from the content browser in Cinema 4D, for example. So the first object is a exposure emitter to emit fuel, heat, and smoke. In this case, I cho I've chosen a small sphere and I apply the explosion emitter tag to it, or the explosion source. Um, that's what it's officially called. So you right click an object like a primitive and select the X particles explosion source. Uh, this way that object will become a fire source. It will start emitting fuel, heat and smoke. The second key object is an Explosia domain. In this domain, you can um, you can render the fuel, the heat, and the smoke. So with that, without this domain, which is the, the 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 pink box you see in this video, it will not work. So you need these two elements to make the smoke visible in your viewport. Now, in, or, in order to fill the letters with smoke. You're going to need the letters, of course. So choose a cool font that you like. I've chosen a quite uh, chunky font so that the uh, letters can easily be filled. Now, the fourth object that you need is an Explosion Collider tag. So with this Explosion FX Collider tag, which is under the X particles tags if you right click an object. Um, so right click the letters in this case and select Explosia FX Collider. This way the, the fuel, the heat and the smoke can collide with the letters. If you don't de do this, the, the smoke will just will generate and evaporate in the, the Explosia FX domain you made. But with the collider tag, it can collide with any object that you uh, apply it to. A very important step is to uncheck the solid box in the explosion tag. So this is the tag that it's that is applied to the letters in this case. If you uncheck solid, that way the smoke will fill up the insides of the letters. If you leave it on solid, nothing will happen. It's very important because when it's solid, when the two objects um, 
overlap each other. So the, the emitter sphere in this case and one of the letters that you made, they overlap. But when the letter is solid, the emitter just won't work because it's, it's because, of, because of this overlap of the two objects. So when you uncheck the solid checkbox, again, that is the tag you attach to the letters, the simulation should work. If the simulation is too slow, you can always up the simulation speed under the simulation tab in the explosion domain, the explosion effects object, the, the pink box that we're using in this tutorial. By increasing the simulation speed, you can fill up the letters quicker if it's uh, going too slow for you. Then the fifth object, which is also very important, important is the X particles cache object. With the cache object, you can not only cache a simulation and scrub through it, which makes it easier for playback in your viewport, but it's also needed for the sixth object, which is a Redshift volume object. In this case, I'm using Redshift, but you should be able to use it in, I don't know, any render engine that supports volumes, so Octane, that kind of stuff that, that, that should work as well. But for this tutorial, I'm using Redshift. So yeah, I'm using a volume object to point toward the cache object or the cache path uh, th that we made in step five. So add the volume object and point that object toward the cache folder. So you only have to select the first file in this folder, press the detect animation or detect frames button in this object and set maybe set the, the playback mode to loop or once, whatever you like. And then for the final and seventh object, you're going to need a redshift material, which you can apply to the redshift vol volume. So when you press create in Cinema 4D, when you have redshift uh, installed, of course, when you press create in the uh, material tab on the bottom, just go to redshift materials, and select the volume material at the bottom, which is set up in a way that it automatically works for volume objects. So create that volume material, apply it to the volume object, and you should almost be golden. Just be sure to fill in density in the scatter channel. Density is one of the channels that gets cached, but without pointing to it in the volume shader, uh, you still won't see anything in the in the render. So make sure you fill in density in the uh, scatter channel. So you can always change the colors of the smoke. The default gradient is um, black to white. That goes for the scatter, the absorption and the emission. Those are the different elements of the, the volume. See those at the, as the different elements of the volume. So the absorption tends to be the the darker shades of the, the smoke and the emission tend to be the lighter shades of the smoke of the simulation. So feel free to mess around with these settings in order to uh, really make it your own. But the default settings should be good for a realistic smoky look. You'll want to add a redshift light, maybe something like an area light or a spotlight and slide up the volume contribution scale all the way up to one. You can do that in the volume tab that is in the light source. So just add a, a wretch of light to your scene, go to the volume tab and slide up volume contribution all the way up to one. This way the light will contribute to the volume. So the light will be scattered and absorbed by the volume settings. So this way the volume will become uh, way more noticeable in your scene. It's a crucial step in order to make it visible in your uh, renders. So I'm gonna have to give a big shout out to Workbench for giving me the tip on unchecking the solid checkbox in the explosion tag. Definitely check out his tutorials. I'll link to it in the description below. Thanks to his tutorial that I uh, got this simulation working because I was fidgeting around with the with getting the simulation to work. Turns out it was unchecking the solid box, which was a very important step. So 
I hope you made it all the way through this tutorial and uh, did not s skip that very crucial, important piece of information. Anyway, I hope you liked this tutorial. Please leave a comment, uh, like it, share or subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you have any requests for future tutorials. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.